Adding and subtracting polynomials is really just a fancy way of combining like terms. One thing you have to be careful with subtracting though, of course, is remembering that the minus sign applies to every term of your polynomial. First, let's look at some different ways you can organize your work for adding and subtracting polynomials. One way some students like to do is to arrange their work vertically. Another way is to group each term according to its degree. Let's do the vertically one first. You're asked to simplify this polynomial plus that polynomial. Notice these are actually two trinomials. Trinomials because they've got three terms. And don't be confused when you see parentheses in your homework. A lot of times we see parentheses and we think, okay, parentheses means probably multiplying. But be careful, this parentheses term is being added to that parentheses term. It would be multiplying if there wasn't that plus sign. Now this would be multiplying. In our case, there was a plus sign, so I know to be adding. Okay, let me show you how vertically these could be arranged. If I were to write these two trinomials on top of each other, it might help a visual learner to see how to add them. For example, here's my first trinomial, 3x squared plus 6x plus 7. And then to that, I'm going to add 3x squared take away 9x take away 8. Now I'm just going to add vertically. 3x squared plus 3x squared is, uh, whoops, not 9. We're adding 6x squared, 6x take away, or plus negative 9x is take away 3x's, and then 7 plus negative 8 is negative 1. That's my answer right there. This is one way you could do this problem by writing it vertically. Just be really careful when you're lining up things that you line up your x squareds with your x squareds, your regular x's with your regular x's. Also, if this had been a subtraction problem, be really careful when you write it that you remember that this minus sign would apply to each of these terms. Let me show you another way to do this problem. Notice this in blue here is the exact same problem as this guy here. I'm going to do this exact same problem another way. And here's how the other way works. When you're grouping these problems according, or grouping these terms according to degree, remember degree means the exponent. So if I look, I'm going to be looking for all my x squareders. I have 3x squared and then 3 more x squared, so all together that is 6x squared. That's going to be the first part of my answer. Then I'm looking for my regular x terms. I have 6x here, take away 9x, so all together that's negative 3x. And then last but not least, I want to look for my constant terms, or the terms without any x's. Here's 7, take away 8. 7 take away 8 is negative 1, so that's my constant term, and here's my final answer. You can see this is the same problem, so I got the same answer, that's good. This way requires a little bit more writing, so to be honest, most of my students use this method. Just be really careful when you're doing this method that you account for every single term in both your polynomials. You don't want to leave anybody out. I personally like to use color or different markings. Like you see, I did brown squigglies on my x squared terms. I circled my regular x's in a different color, and I did underlinings for my constant terms. That just helps me as a visual person to not only show that every single term has been accounted for, but also to see which terms are getting grouped together because they had the same degree. So when you guys see these kinds of problems, adding and subtracting polynomials, it's up to you if you choose to rewrite it vertically or if you like to do this grouping according to degree. Either way is fine. Just make sure you're really precise with your positive and negative signs.